I'd like to thank Birch Living for sponsoring this video. Are you afraid to cut your fabric? Do you pour over Pinterest looking for patterns but never commit? Are you stuck swapping blocks around to find the perfect layout? There are many reasons why we get trapped by doubt. So this video is all about overthinking, how overthinking can derail our projects and kill creativity. But more important, I'll have some strategies of how you can get back on track when it strikes. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. With all the events of the past five years, there are many reasons for being overwhelmed and off balance. And overthinking is often a consequence of all that stress and uncertainty. Overthinking is when your thoughts and worries circle in an endless loop. Instead of preparing for the next step, overthinking usually leads to an inaction as you become overwhelmed in fear. In quilting, overthinking can be expressed in many ways. How about pattern paralysis? Spending hours browsing through countless quilt patterns, unable to choose one because of the fear of choosing the wrong one or not finding the perfect pattern for a project. Then there's fabric frenzy, overanalyzing fabric choices, agonizing over color combinations and prints, and second guessing every fabric selection, fearing that they won't complement each other or the pattern. How about design dilemmas? Constantly tweaking the design layout, rearranging quilt blocks, and questioning whether the design is visually appealing or cohesive enough fearing that there's just a better layout out there if you just keep trying. Then there's technique troubles, doubting your quilting skills, worrying about achieving perfect seams or precise measurements, or fearing that the mistakes or imperfections will ruin the whole project, or that you'll be shamed for making them. And then gift-giving anxiety, stressing over whether the quilt will be appreciated by its intended recipient, fearing that it won't meet their expectations or match their preferences and all your effort will be worthless. Do any of these sound familiar? The first part of any solution is recognizing when it happens. This sounds simple, but often when we're deep in an overthink, it's hard to see that we are actually spinning. So I find it's always a good practice to use a timer while you work. Whether you set it for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour, that alarm can break through your thoughts and bring attention to your lack of progress. You might think that the footage here is on pause. Unfortunately, I am deep in a spiral about if I'm going to make my quilt any longer. I am so thankful that I have my watch timer on to bring me out of it. It will give you a moment to just give yourself a good shake, reshape your thoughts, and get back on track. What I find interesting about overthinking is that it's usually your superpower gone bad. A person who's good with details, laying out a project and accounting for everything, get lost chasing little details that have minor importance, or a person that loves diving deep into a subject, knowing everything they can know, can wander far off with research that no longer relates to what you originally wanted to do. Like looking at a picture of a real squirrel for reference for your collage, and 15 minutes later, you're reading about baby squirrels and the 10 squirrel species in Ontario or a person like myself who likes to just start and figuring it out as you go along, only to make a mistake and then your thoughts start spiraling because you don't want to go backwards. Our superpowers are precious and we do not want to burn them out. So be sure that you're getting enough rest. This can be by either going to bed early or removing things from your to-do list. Or maybe you even have to, at this time in your life, just set this project aside for a week or two until life is less hectic. Let's face it, we are often squeezing in our quilting between a job, family, and home. 
So often from the get-go, we are working with a less than full battery pack, breaking your project into smaller, more manageable tasks that fit into your time slot will make the whole project less daunting. It will also help you focus on one thing at a time so that overthinking doesn't creep in. When I was making my aviatrix quilt, there were 72 butterfly blocks in the outside border. I can't tell you how many hours I overthought that one, but when I was finally able to break it down by color, then by shade, then by just making the tops and the bottoms, I was able to stop twirling and move forward. Before we go to the next part, let me tell you about Birch Living and the mattress that's on my bed. So I've been doing a lot of deep cleaning around the house, and I'm sure many of you have been doing the same. You might be thinking of how you can get rid of unnecessary allergens. So this is a great time to look at upgrading your bed. Birch mattresses are GOTS and Green Guard Gold certified, meaning that they are free of any polyurethane-based foams and harsh, unnecessary chemicals and pollutants. They are fiberglass free and crafted with sustainably sourced organic and natural materials like wool, making them hypoallergenic and mildew resistant. As you can see, it comes rolled up in a box and it's fairly straightforward to set it up yourself. I have slept so well the last couple of years, which could be because of the mattress's 1,000 individually wrapped steel coils that cradle your body and limit motion transfer. Or maybe it's the organic materials that help keep me cool and regulate my body temperature while I sleep. I liked my mattress so much that I gifted one to my sister and one to my parents. So we're all sleeping better this year. Ordering online can be nerve wracking. With Birch, you get a 100 nights sleep trial, as well as a 25 year warranty. They are made right here in North America and delivery is free to your door within the US. With every order, you'll also receive two Birch EcoRest pillows made from recycled plastic bottles. They're breathable and better for the environment. I love my Birch mattress and I think that you will too. If you're looking to upgrade your sleep, it is the perfect time to check out Birch Living. You can get 20% off your Birch mattress plus two EcoRest pillows by visiting birchliving.com quilts or clicking on the link below or clicking on this QR code. We all have steps where we're more inclined to overthink than in other steps. For you, it might be choosing fabrics. For another, it might be finding the best cutting plan. For me, it's always laying out my blocks and finding the perfect layout. Honestly, I could turn and move blocks forever. So setting a time limit before you begin can save a lot of heartache. For smaller quilts, I lay all the blocks out and then set my timer for 30 minutes to do any tweaking. For larger quilts, I give myself an afternoon to lay it out and tweak as I want. Then after a good night's sleep, with fresh eyes, I give myself one more day to make any necessary tweaks. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody, all the time. So understand that your quilt is not going to be perfect. Allow yourself to make mistakes, learn from them, and keep moving forward. So much is forgiven once you get the binding on. If you start with this expectation, when you feel that old soundtrack in your head begin to loop, the one full with fear of failure, harmonized with a lack of confidence, with a chorus of perfectionism, you can step back and remind yourself that any perfections are just part of this quilt story. So you can shut that soundtrack down. Every quilter makes mistakes and no quilt is perfect. Often when we overthink, it's because of fault in our logic. Common examples are the all or nothing, thinking that there's only two outcomes, success or failure. It's a disaster thinking about only the worst possible outcome in a situation. Overgeneralizing, assuming that something will always be a certain way based on just one or two examples. 
jumping to conclusions, assuming that you'll know how something will turn out with very little experience in it. And last one is mind reading, believing that you know how somebody else is thinking without them telling you. So grab a buddy, whether it be in person, on Zoom, or in a chat, and just talk about it. Sometimes just saying it out loud allows you to see the errors in your logic and move on. But sometimes it takes some discussion to discover what is holding you back. Thank you. Really appreciate your <laughs> advice. I, yeah, I'm being silly. I'm just overthinking it. And sometimes it has to be pointed out to you, but then you can deal with it and move on. It's funny how we believe that if we confirm all the details, have done all the research and asked all the questions, a starting line will magically appear. Maybe if you're taking a quilt class, the teacher's prompt will help get you going. But for the rest of us, you just have to start. It can be a tiny step, it can be a big step. The key is just to take that first step. It could be the first block. It even could just be the first seam. Or in my case, the first cut. But it will release some of that stress and help get you going. Some overthinking cannot be brushed aside. It can be triggered by trauma, both in the past or in the present, that possibly does not even relate to what you're working on. This is the time to be kind to yourself and to seek professional help. If your leg had a gash in it that needed stitches, you would seek help, right? The same should hold true with your mental health and your family doctor is a good place to start. That first step was really hard, but I think I'm through the worst of my doubt now. Though it appears it's gonna take me longer than I suspected, I can't wait to show you my finished hazelnut. Stay tuned. Remember, it's okay to have doubts and fears. Just don't let them paralyze you. Take a deep breath, trust in yourself, and just get it done. Take care, and I'll see you next time.